Good morning. And welcome to Missouri Poetry Out Loud State Contest. Yay. My name is Susan Cole, and this morning it's my job to make certain that each young person here gets the best opportunity possible to present the poems that they've selected. Currently, I'm employed by Southeast Missouri State University to oversee a charter school they sponsor in St. Louis. Immediately prior to that, I worked for a lot of years at the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Out of the many opportunities I had there, by far the best was to guide the development of the Missouri Fine Arts Academy. I have some college degrees from several Missouri universities. The greatest gift that they gave to me was devotion to and appreciation for the written and spoken word. I'm a lifelong believer in the power of a poem. So I take this job seriously this morning, and I'm gonna move forward with the seventh Missouri State Poetry Out Loud contest as smoothly as possible. I've watched artistically gifted kids weave their magic for many, many years. We're going to be thrilled to watch these gifted young men and women bring words to life through performance. The National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation have partnered with state arts agencies of the United States to support the expansion of Poetry Out Loud. It encourages the nation's youth to learn about great poetry through memorization and performance. This exciting program helps students master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and learn about their literary heritage. The Missouri Arts Council helps fuel this program in Missouri. We're proud of the students and teachers who participated in this project in all the Missouri schools. I hope you'll find this day an example of what's good about the arts and about literature education in Missouri. I'm happy to invite now Nola Ruth, the chair of the Missouri Arts Council, to the stage for a few remarks. Good morning. This is the third opportunity I've had to um, attend this, and it is actually a wonderful, wonderful ceremony. What I was thinking about this morning was how many people are involved in making this happen, from the primary funder, which is the Poetry Foundation, to the National Endowment, through the state agencies, support from education, but it's also the volunteers, the participants, the students, the parents. So I congratulate you all on your efforts and what you've done to make this happen. And now I'm going to introduce a good friend of mine and a great supporter of the art, the First Lady, George Ann Nixon. Thank you, Nola, and good morning, everyone. This is an exciting day for all of us, but especially for those of you who will be performing today. This competition is the culmination of hours and hours of practice in front of the mirror, alone, in front of your friends and family, and it, those people you could trust. And you have all won, and that is why you are here today. In this process, you've all been great role models, too, showing others in your school and community how poetry can come alive. And it takes trust in yourself to do what you've done, to tackle a poem, sometimes from another era, to live with that poem until it becomes part of you, and you can perform it and let it continue to live. So we thank you. And that's why the state of Missouri is so proud, so proud to support this event and the young people here today. Because as our department, uh, Chris Peeper here knows from the Department of Economic Development, that this state, we need our doctors and lawyers and engineers and builders, but we also need our poets and our artists, those who push the frontier forward in areas of thought and creativity. In short, 
we need you. So congratulations on all of the hard work that you have done to get here today, because your dedication to poetry has contributed immeasurably to the literacy and culture of our state. You are all an inspiration to us. This is also a special day for the family members and friends and teachers who've traveled here with you today. So parents, teachers, family and friends, thank you for all you've done to support these students and give them this wonderful opportunity to be part of Poetry Out Loud. We also owe thanks, as Nola mentioned, to many people who make this possible. In the state of Missouri, we're proud to be strengthening this every year. From Nola Ruth, Beverly Strohmeyer, and Virginia Sanders of the Missouri Arts Council, our regional coordinators from the National Endowment for the Arts, Russell Warning of the Etta and Joseph Miller Performing Arts Center, Michael Gaines of the Missouri Association of, Missouri, of Community Arts Agencies, Stephen Young of the Poetry Foundation, Chris Pieper, Acting Director of the Missouri Department of Economic Development, and Diane Odsley with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Also a very important part, I'd like to thank the volunteer judges today, Wiki Slight, Betty Shaper, Rusty Rosencutter, and Dr. Laura Brewer-Ackerman, and our accuracy judge, Debbie Nichols, our prompter, Dr. Jenny Kramer, and of course, we're always honored to have Missouri's Poet Laureate, David Cluel, with us today. And you'll get some time to visit with him today. He's a great inspiration. David, I'd like to thank you for your lifelong dedication to poetry as a professor at Webster University, as an advocate for poetry in schools, and what you've done as you've traveled around to schools, prisons, and community centers, and shared the magic of poetry the essence of poetry with Missourians. Thank you for everything. So I'm looking forward to today's competition, to having you all at the Missouri Governor's Mansion this afternoon, and thank you. Thank you for keeping poetry alive. Next, I'd like to call on Chris Pieper. Chris is the acting director of the Department of Economic Development, which, for those of you who don't know, houses the Missouri Arts Council and takes good care of us. Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Ruth, um, Madam First Lady, um, Executive Director Strohmeyer, and other honored guests. Uh, it really is a, a, a privilege to be here today to take part in this exciting event. I'm, I'll be very brief because I'm thrilled, and I think we all are, to hear these, these outstanding young poets to get started. Uh, they've worked very hard to get here, as, as parents uh, can attest, and as you young people can attest, and so we're, we're very excited uh, to hear that. I just wanted to provide some brief remarks uh, to, as Chairwoman Ruth said, regarding the, the tie between economic development uh, and the arts here in Missouri. Um, as the Chairwoman indicated, the uh, division of, of the Missouri Arts Council is actually a division within the Department of Economic Development. And I think that just underscores how, uh, as we work to promote economic development and to strengthen our communities, that the arts are a vital part of that. And that when, when we look to, to grow our Missouri businesses and to attract new businesses to our state, um, they look at things like the, the quality of life, and that's represented by the vitality of the arts uh, in our state. Um, I think in addition to the, the overall quality of life, the, uh, the, 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 just the raw numbers in terms of the economic impact provided by the arts are really staggering. Uh, uh, arts for America recently did a study that indicated that approximately $1.1 billion worth of, of statewide economic activity is attributed to the arts here in the state of Missouri. Uh, and that supports approximately 15,000 full-time jobs. So uh, the arts aren't just a thing that makes our life better, but they're also a livelihood. And I think many of you in this room can, can attest to that. Uh, and I think that that study serves as tangible evidence that investments that we make uh, in the arts are investments in our overall uh, economic well-being. Uh, the Missouri Arts Council is, is, is a key uh, component of, of that investment. Uh, in fiscal year 2011 alone, the Missouri Arts Council awarded uh, $7.2 million worth of grants to 584 arts organizations in 120 Missouri communities. Those are communities throughout the state, and I think there's been some very exciting work that those grantees uh, have done. 
Uh, there's been 15,000 arts events uh, that in fiscal year 11 as a result of that funding, attended by more than 8 million people. Uh, and that's about 6,000 full-time and part-time jobs just from those events. Uh, and, and the grantees that are funded through the Missouri Arts Council were able to, to fund more than 55,000 uh, artists who were, who were uh, employed by those organizations. So just a tremendous impact uh, on both the, the, the vitality of the arts here in the state and also our economy overall. Now, that's a lot of numbers, and I think that the, the $115 million in salaries that, that uh, were earned by those folks, it's a huge amount of tax revenue that's generated. Um, you know, that, it's easy to get caught up in those numbers and, and to see how big of an impact it is. But I think it's events like this that see that there's, there's more than just numbers involved. There's uh, keeping the arts strong and vital uh, in the state of Missouri. And that's why I'm, I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to, to, to see these young poets uh, to, to, to provide uh, the, what they've worked very hard to do, uh, and also to promote the uh, continued investment in Missouri arts um, at, through the Department of Economic Development. So thank you again. Okay, next, another important piece in this, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Diane Alsley is gonna talk to us about the support that they offer us. Good morning. It's truly a pleasure to be here with all of you this morning. Last year was my first opportunity to attend Poetry Out Loud. I really had no idea what to expect when I first came here, but I was so impressed with what I saw during that initial experience that I have been waiting anxiously for this to come around again this year. As I was sitting in the audience last year, the thought occurred to me that this contest isn't just about poetry. This competition also helps students master public speaking, and it also helps build interpersonal communication skills. It promotes self-confidence and self-esteem. It gives practice in problem solving and reflection. But it is also, ultimately, about the love of poetry. It is about taking someone else's words and making them your own. In the words of a former Poetry Out Loud champion, when a poem works, as it often does, it, takes you, it taps you on the shoulder, gets all in, inside of you and says, see me, hear me, I'm here, I will not be ignored. That's what a poem does. And if you open up your heart and accept it, it will change you. I personally believe poetry and this competition itself change everyone involved. Students, teachers, parents, audience members, judges, for the better. On behalf of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, I want to thank everyone involved for this rich experience. And I especially wish good luck to all the competitors. Next, we're gonna hear from our current Poet Laureate. David Kuhl has been Poet Laureate now for two years. Done a wonderful job. He's going to inspire all of you students to become poets. David. It is a pleasure to be invited back to this day of the Poetry Out Loud finals. Uh, memorizing. To memorize a poem really is, as you just heard, to make it your own. It becomes part of an extended collaboration that any poem, if it is to work, if it is to be effective, it is a collaboration between the writer of that poem and the reader of the poem. When you memorize it, take that into you. By heart is the expression because that's where it lives, freely chosen, you love it, Every time that hits the air, no matter where you are able to say it, that collaboration, that wonderful and necessary collaboration, extends out in some further ripples. Uh, one of my favorite by heart collaborators I've ever known was a hobo and rail rider, Virginia Slim, who I met in 1978. 
Slim spent a lot of time in all kinds of towns and always sought the library. He said, well, it was a place that was dry and it was a place that I felt at home. And I started reading poetry in the libraries because I knew I'd have to leave and catch another car out and I could take some of that, finish it. He said, I didn't try to memorize it. I would just read certain things I liked so much over and over that it did become a part of him. The man knew 500, 600 poems by heart and not just haiku. Every syllable, every word of Walt Whitman's Song of Myself, every one of Shakespeare's sonnets, pitch perfect, by heart, not because it was a competition, not because it was going to get him a free meal, but because he loved that language. And every time he put it back out into the air, that language lived again. Well, when I was in school, I hated poetry. I read everything, I thought, but poetry would send me screaming top speed in the opposite direction. It didn't seem to have a whole lot to do with my life. This wasn't poetry's fault, of course, but the way I was shown and taught poetry in school. There was always a delicate flower cracking up through the ground, or a winged horse, not even a winged horse, a winged horse flying through the sky. And I looked up at 10 years old from the streets of Newark, New Jersey, and said, oh, I don't see no winged horses, hmm? That was to change, but the change was slow. My father, who was not uh, an educated man, though a smart man, saw his son always reading, if not poetry. My beloved comic books, science fiction, flying saucers, serious business, and would always look at me a little skeptically, but then rather sweetly would say, more than one time, if you're gonna be spending so much time reading, I think you should probably be reading the classics. And time has only made that comment sweeter to me. I'm not sure that my father knew exactly what the classics were, but he knew what it meant, uh, words that had lasted and that may will last into the future. This is a poem, very, very early poem that I dedicate to my father right now called The Dangers Inherent in Reading the Classics. I was immersed in the story of the great white whale as I sat soaking in my tub, my body recreating the waves that Melville only wrote down. Ahab was disappearing and reappearing, strapped by ropes to the furious whale. I was watching him beckon mysteriously when the phone rang, unmistakably. When I answered, you asked if I was busy. Busy. How to explain the social mentality of New Bedford? The trail of water from the bathroom to your voice? Then, how I lost my place when I lost my footing, Ahab and the whale and the remains of the Pequod sailing through the air to the floor. The commotion confused you. You asked if you woke me. I said I'd be at your place by eight, that I'd bring some lighter reading. If I happen to be late, please don't call. By the time I knock on your door, I will have forgotten all this, and please, when I walk in, don't call me Ishmael. <laughs> I wish the best to everyone, every one of you here this morning. I look forward to hearing your renditions of these poems, and no matter what happens, and no matter how things turn out, I wish you also that this is just the beginning. Hmm? So many poems to keep alive in the storehouse of your by heart heart. Spread the words. Thank you. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Stephen Young. Stephen is with the Poetry Foundation. And the Poetry Foundation is why we're all sitting here today. Through the National Endowment for the Arts, they fund this recitation contest nationally. So you're about to hear from another man whose life is poetry, Stephen. Thank you. 
Uh, an artist friend of mine uh, recently referred to that winged horse, uh, the Pegasus, as uh, some of us call it, it's on my tie here, as a cross between a donkey and an angel. So think about that. I'll be very brief as I recognize that I stand between you and the real reason we're gathered today. Let me give a big shoulders thank you to the First Lady, the Missouri Arts Council, and everyone in this room for your kind hospitality and your exemplary efforts in helping Poetry Out Loud to flourish here. It may be the students who shine today, but there are a great many lights turned on them, teachers, parents, siblings, and friends. They deserve kudos and gratitude as well. The Poetry Foundation exists to discover and celebrate the best poetry and to place it before the largest possible audience. The foundation is just nine years old, but it grew out of Poetry Magazine, which celebrates its 100th anniversary this year. How has it survived so long, you may wonder? Possibly by publishing so many excellent poets who either were born in Missouri or took up residence in the state. One of the most famous poems it printed came from a young man who grew up in St. Louis, T.S. Eliot. The love song of J. Alfred Prufrock marked his first appearance in print way back in 1915, and it changed the course of the art in the 20th century. Other notable poets with Missouri ties who have figured significantly in the work of the magazine or the foundation include Marianne Moore, Sarah Teasdale, Langston Hughes, Howard Nemroff, Mona Van Dyne, John Ann Morris, Naomi Shiab Nye, and James Tate. I can remember as an editor at Poetry Magazine being delighted to read some bishops from David Cluel, especially a poem or two in the vivid voice of Harry Houdini and one about the great detecto of boardwalk weight guesser. Just two weeks ago in Chicago, I, had, I heard a very talented young poet, Greg Brounderville, who teaches down the road at Lincoln University. And let's not forget Maya Angelou. All this is to say that the Show Me State has an incredibly rich poetic heritage, and I feel certain that we add to that today. Poetry Out Loud may be a contest, but at heart, it's about exploring and discovering poetry. The best prizes the competition offers are ones you regional champs have already won, the poems themselves. You'll always have them, and we're deeply grateful to you for sharing them. Congratulations and good luck to all contestants. Thank you.